Good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to people viewing us tonight live. Welcome also to those watching us on the uh, catch up at a later date. We've got a lovely evening ahead of us tonight. I know that uh, with the wonderful Fiona Parry Dodd, who is talking to us from Broadsands in Paynton in Devon. Mm -hmm. uh, and she'll be presenting an evening uh, focused on her healing journey. Uh, and how she came to be where she is today and all those little trials, tribulations and successes, obviously, along the way. Fiona, thank you so much for agreeing to join tonight. So over to you, my darling. Well, thank you, Lawrence, for inviting me. And as we spoke, we did our trial yesterday. I said to you that when you asked me, I was thrilled to bits and honoured. And then as the days and the weeks have gone by, I thought, what have I, what have I agreed to? And I was shaking in my shoes, but actually it's fine now that I'm here and I'm doing it. And do you know what? I'm so pleased and honoured. And I'm so grateful to everybody who's tuned in tonight because they are the supporters, really. They are the people that keep us going, isn't there? The people who care and the people who are full of love. And as I'm sat here now, I'm aware of my granddaughters that are watching and um, Olivia, who's in Hereford with her mum. And um, yeah. I haven't seen for a while. So there's a few of us that haven't seen our grandchildren for a little while. And that's been tough. But my other little granddaughter is Freya. So um, so welcome to both of them. And I had a little surprise for Livy because uh, when she visits, she loves my Gloria. So here's my Gloria. So isn't she gorgeous? So this is for you, Livy. This is for you. And um, it won't be long till we're back together and we can have a little play with Gloria again because she talks as much as I do and, and that's saying something. So there you go. Yeah, so I'll keep her here. Yeah, so, um, yes. Yeah. so we'll, do you want me to um, start from the beginning or just... Yeah, yeah, it's just a nice casual chat. You know, people are coming on tonight. They want to know about you why you're here tonight, you know, what makes you tick. But before we do, um, was it Livy, your granddaughter? Yes, Livy, Olivia, yes. We call her Livy. Uh, Olivia Rita, her name is, yeah. Okay, well, um, parents in charge of Olivia, if you want to put a comment on uh, to Fiona, I can pop that up on the screen for her. So if you are watching, you can pop a comment on. That would be lovely. Um, and if you don't pop a comment on, you're going to get a phone call saying, why weren't you watching? <laughs> No, they are watching. They said they were watching. And, and really, doing this is for them, really, because, um, you know, everything, I have this belief that we create magical moments every day. And those magical moments are ones that we can look back on when times are hard. And, you know, there are times when the journey can get a bit tough. But then if we have these magical moments in the bank, we can call back on them. And this is one that I'm creating for my for my beautiful granddaughters and my children, yeah. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. We were just having a quick conversation before we uh, went live tonight, and I was saying about, you know, we read often of the pioneers of early spiritualism. Well, in a way, today, we're seeing pioneers of spiritualism for this time, and that's not, you know, people that know me know that I've got no ego. Uh, I buried that in the garden quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, we, we've got to get out there. We've got to be able to present these things. We've got to keep everybody in touch, in contact, uh, yeah. and you know, just feed that need because so many people need something. They need that communication from spirit. They need reaffirmation of their own beliefs. Yeah. Uh, they need to learn new perspectives as well. You know, yeah. so that there's so much there to give. Yeah. And spirit. yeah, excuse the pun, because we've got a captive yeah. audience. Let's go for it. <laughs> yeah that's right well for me it's all about love and unconditional love and when that's the vibration and i'll be talking about energy tonight and my, my love of everything that's energy but mostly my tuning forks and i just know that when we operate from that place of unconditional love that you can't really go wrong because it's a feeling isn't it and if you give out love, people feel that love. And if you don't give out love, they feel that as well. So Indeed. indeed. Um, yeah. I've always been a big one to say it's always about the intent. 
all yeah. our actions are always based on the intent and if that intent is unconditional love do you know what it's not going to go wrong how mm -hmm. that person receives it is their mm -hmm. you know their thing yeah. how we act we can't make people act in the way we want no the only thing we can control is us mm -hmm. that's true so if yeah, if we're always coming from that heart center and mm -hmm. giving, as you just quite rightly said about the unconditional love, mm -hmm. we're doing our part. You know, everything, every interaction is two sided. Mm -hmm. Our side is coming out in that energy. If the other side doesn't take it in that or whatever, do you know what? That is theirs. That is mm -hmm. theirs to look after and control. Mm -hmm. It's not up to us to say, you will do it my way. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, people don't like to be told. We don't like to be told. And I, I'm currently, I mean, I'm stepping ahead a bit here, but I'm currently studying hypnotherapy at the moment with the Devon Clinic, with the wonderful Chris Fleet. And what I've been learning with him has been amazing. But I'll, I'm jumping ahead, so I'll go, I'll go back to the beginning of my journey, actually. That's all right, my darling. There's a message yep. come up. Now, that's my grand, that's my uh, daughter-in-law and my... Um, and my granddaughter, my elder granddaughter's mum, yeah. Oh, yeah. right, they've messaged you, have they? Yes, yeah, it's just oh, popped, okay. it popped up to me. I didn't see it on there. Yes, it's just popped in on my messenger, so, yeah. Lovely. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It's lovely. I know they're watching. They said they'd watch. There's others there watching as well, which is lovely. Yeah, yeah so we'll go back then. Shall we go back to where the start of my journey into understanding and, and discovering spiritualism? And it was yes. in 1994 when I was um, pregnant with my second son and I wasn't very well and I had, um, as people do, um, and I ended up, my mother took me to Stroud Spiritualist Church and I lived in Gloucestershire then and I had um, spiritual healing and I sat in the chair and this lovely gentleman called Gil and he's in the spirit world now and the lady and I sat there and he put he placed his hands on my shoulders and I received this beautiful healing it was just absolutely beautiful and I felt lovely and I felt a sense of peace and I couldn't really describe it anything more than that but afterwards he said to me he actually gave me a clairvoyant message from my Welsh speaking grandfather which some people don't actually always approve of of healers giving uh, clairvoyant messages, but he did. And I remember it was what I needed at the time. And I walked away and I thought, how did he know that? And he, he, they asked me to train and develop at Stroud Church. And I refused because I, my mind was on having, having my child and, and my, my eldest son and my career because I, had a, I was um, establishing my, my career then. And so I didn't bother. And then several years went by. And in 2007, I was living down here in Devon. And as life has this wonderful way of um, giving you these little life lessons, I, I, had an ex I had a time where I needed some more support. So I remembered what had happened to me at Stroud Church. So I rocked up at Paynton Spiritualist Centre and I had a little um, a taster, really, of, of doing healing. And I can remember the lovely lady, her name's Lynn, who's still there, and she's the healer trainer there, a beautiful, beautiful uh, teacher. And she asked me to scan the body of this person, and then she said, what do you get? What do you think? What do you feel? And I said, I, I don't, I haven't a clue. So she said, well, ask. So I did ask and, and straight away came back and a thought. And so I told the person what the thought was and that frightened me. It really frightened me because I thought, well, how did I know that? I've no idea how I knew that. And so I stepped away. I still didn't pursue the journey. So I've been a bit resistant actually to, to my journey. I think that's quite um, a common um initial approach to our way of life you know be it through healing mediumship philosophy yeah. whatever yeah. there is always well not always but i do find quite a lot of the time there is that hesitance mm. 
you know, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And, you know, the spirit of there, they're going, come on, come on, yeah. come on, look, yeah. come on, look. <laughs> you know, yeah. sooner or later, you're just going to have to surrender. <laughs> I have been very resistant all the way along, and but that's me. I'm a bit stubborn, I suppose. Well, so anyway, I didn't, I didn't pursue it, and I walked away again, and I ended up doing a hairdressing course, and I kept having all these sort of, you know, I didn't realise how psychic I was at the time. I didn't realise that I was connected to spirit and I could receive messages. But I'd be there doing people's hair and I'd be getting all these things and I'd be thinking, what's all this? What's all this? And I was ignoring it. And then in um, 2012, um, my mother died. Well, she passed the spirit, as um, we know. And it actually changed my life um, and put me on the path I'm on now, really, because I was so, so close to her. I mean, we were so close. And my mother was really was very gifted as a psychic and a medium, but she didn't um, want it. And um, but after she died or passed the spirit, as we say, um, all these things started happening to me. And I ended up then at Lupton House in Brixham and that's where I trained as a UK accredited spiritualist healer with Janet and Janet took me under her wing and she's still up there at Lupton and um, she's been there for 10 years now and she's done some magnificent healing work because when she when I arrived at her door I really did need somebody to take me under their wing and, and explain to me what was happening because I didn't have a clue and so I trained it took me two years to understand about energy understand about the chakra points in the body energy and where the, the energy points are to understand um, all what is healing and the, to be a professional healer to be accredited and understand that the duty that we have and the responsibility we have and how we treat people and and what you know, anybody can be a healer, but but you need to know really. I mean, if you if you're working from a place of love, anybody can be a healer, because that's what it is. It's working from your heart to their heart, but understanding um, how to be with the healing, and that's what I learned at Lupton with Janet. And so I ended up staying up at Lupton. Um, and I'm still there, really. I, I was up there just before the lockdown. And I hadn't been back for a year because I'd stepped away to do other things at the church. But it was a feeling of coming home when I went down the drive and I said that to her. It felt, and that's where my healing, my own healing journey had started. And so I, not only did I go to Lupton in 2013, I ended up um, going to the hospice to offer my services as a volunteer. And the lady who interviewed me said, I think you should do the bereavement training course. And so I did. And I, I, they put me through a, a series of training. And then I went out in the community and spoke to people who were struggling with grief. And I remember that's when my connection again started to come in even stronger with my um, psychics and spirit links. And the lady who trained me at, at, at Rowcroft at the hospice, uh, she was just amazing. And she, so I had a lot of support. I had, I had our local hospice supporting me and I had Lupton supporting me. And so I ended up working as a volunteer at Lupton. And I, I ended up doing my mental health first aid training whilst I was at Lupton. And that was... That was really, I was, I mean, all the learning I've done, it's been healing and, and learning for me. And I just share that now with whoever wants to know, really, and wants to, you know, to get on that footsteps of learning. Because the more educated we are, the more we learn, the more it helps us and it helps our loved ones and those around us, really. Most so, definitely. Um, yeah. With healing. Um, we often say, you know, the concept of healing sometimes is, you know, the typical hands on the shoulders giving healing. Mm -hmm. but as we know, healing manifests itself in so many ways. I was quite interested what you said yeah. there about the bereavement training. You know, that mm -hmm. is in itself 
an art of healing, just talking to yeah. people, just yeah. being listen to somebody. Yeah. You know, it's all mm -hmm. about healing is giving service. Yeah. It is. It is. And how that healing, you know, how that service manifests itself yeah. really doesn't matter because you're giving of yourself and you're not yeah. giving because I want something, I'm going to get something out of it, I'm going to look great. Mm -hmm. You're giving it because there's a fellow human being, a fellow mm -hmm. spirit going through a time where they just need that extra energy, that extra support, that extra mm -hmm. upliftment. So, yeah, really, really interesting. Yeah, and so working in the drop-in centre at Lockton, I met all sorts of people, and it was just a, just a beautiful, beautiful journey, really. And and they've got um, a special day on a Tuesday where people can go for healing, and I receive healing up there. And there's a lot of dedicated healers that do this voluntary, and it, it's um, it's you know it's there for people that they need somewhere to go, and we all need somewhere to go at some point. So yeah, it was. It's been. It has been lovely, and so I did that, and then I, I carried on volunteering at the hospice, and then I went to train in massage. So I've got quite a few tools in my toolkit. So I trained in massage, and then I went um, to be a complementary therapist at the hospice, working with end of life out in the community and on the wards. And so that wow. increased my level of learning and training, yes. And, and I work in a care home on a Sunday as a complementary therapist. And I share my Reiki because I did Reiki at Lockton as well in, back in 2015. So I do Reiki. But Reiki and spiritual healing is all from the same source. So, Very much so. It's, it's interesting that you did the spiritual healing first and then the yeah. Reiki. Mm -hmm. more commonly is people will start off on the reiki call as i mm -hmm. myself did yeah um i got to reiki too and i was working with people and i said to my teacher i said people are talking in my ear and they went yeah you don't need to be here. you need to be doing something else i went oh okay leave mm -hmm. it by <laughs> but a yeah. lot of our, lo our lovely healers within the church all started off on that reiki path yeah. Um, because, of course, you know, anything like that, and it's interesting uh, too what you were saying about you were a hairdresser. Yes. All yeah. these uh, fields of work like hairdressing, nail technicians, yeah. nursing, yeah. nursing, so nursing, yeah. and more nursing. Mm -hmm. You're all in that energy field. You're all working mm -hmm. in that aura. And, pe you know, people's awareness really does um, mm -hmm. spring forth in those situations. Yes. Yeah, it does. It's, it's being, it's like, I mean, I love to be with people and I love to, I've always, I'm, I'm a sociable person. So it's like you say, it's tonight, Saturday night, it, the staying in is the new going out. So, um, so I'm, I'm all got me glad rags on. So I'm going out. And uh, so, you know, if people can't come to me, I'll go to them. But people who know me, who know me well, I, I love to have, I love to bake. So I love to have people around for tea and cakes and and food and and so I, I I love that I absolutely love that because we all bring something to the table, don't we? And I love hearing people's stories of life and their experiences. That's what I love in the care home. I've met some amazing people in the care home and amazing people in the hospice and the journey and people out in the community. Amazing, the stories that they tell me and. I feel so honoured, you know, it's just so lovely. And so, so true. Yeah. Here in the church, um, you get that a lot. One of the sad duties but, uh, when you're running a church and before running the church as well, you're asked to officiate at funerals. Yeah. You know, and when you're getting together the story to make, you know, that person there for the day, yeah. make them real to everybody that's yeah. listening. You yeah. hear these awesome stories about people and yeah. you're like, why do know that mm. you know there is a big need for people to share there you know because every life every single one of us mm -hmm. has got a fantastic tale behind yes. us you oh know? yes yeah they have yes i mean in the care home and, and when i've gone into people's homes for the hospice as well and you meet members of their family as well and everything feels so real but um but i just being kind to people, you know, it's, it makes such a difference when you're kind and they feel that kindness. 
And it's um, and what you give out, you get back. I'm a great believer in that. So if you give out that kindness, you'll receive kindness. If you if you give out positivity, you'll receive positivity. Yeah. As you were saying it, the phrase going through my head was, as you give, so shall you receive. Yeah. And it's true, That's isn't right. it? You know, it's true. It is true. If we go out and we have a right Barney with somebody, what do we do? We come home, sit there, go, rrr, 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 kick the cat, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't ever do that, everybody. Um, but yeah, but when you do, when you go out and you actually make somebody smile, yeah. you know, yeah. and just, you can, I had a phone call today from a lady and you could hear the sorrow in her voice. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a good old chat on the phone. Mm -hmm. And by the end of it, in her words, I could hear her smile. Mm -hmm. And I would put the phone down, and I don't know which one of us felt more uplifted. <laughs> I know, that's it. You know, because it was like, yes, yes, yes I, you know, I was there. I was the right for, you know, brilliant. I know. It's lovely, isn't it? I know. Um, I, I mean, I worked in a funeral director's uh, many years ago, and that taught me a lot as well, actually, being with people. So I, I, being with people when they need somebody at that moment. But, um, but yeah, I've had quite a lot of learning really in different environments. I'm thinking now about the, when I'd finished doing my um, healing courses and my UK accredited healers, my Reiki healing. Um, I went on to do my, and I did my bereavement training at the hospice and I did my City and Gills massage to become a complementary therapist. And I still wanted to learn more and that's how I am. And I went on then to learn um, to be a sound therapist with the tuning forks. And it was my friend Sally, actually, who is a sound therapist. Um, she kept talking about tuning forks. And I had no interest in them at all until one day I had a, um, a healing session with the tuning forks. And that was another experience of it. Absolutely, I couldn't believe how I felt and how powerful they were. In fact, it was so powerful that the lady who trained me, I booked to go, Debbie at Suara Sound, I rang her up and I said, I, d I don't think I can do this course, I said. And she said, why is that? And I said, well, I've just received a healing, I said, off one of my healer friends at Lupton. Leslie, I've had this healing with her. And it was so powerful that it absolutely, I thought, I don't know if I'll be able to do this for other people. But, it, but I'm so glad I did. So I went off and I trained and I did 15 months of case studies with my tuning forks. And at the... The work that I've done with the, the tuning forks and I include it with my healing so every tuning fork is combined with a healing because the two go together but I also use them sometimes I, with massage as well so um, so it's been interesting combining the all the therapies together um, so in that the work, really yeah well that, that is, sorry as you sorry, say healing um, there's different ways, isn't there? There's the hands-on, the hands-off. Um, but I'm very much a hands-on healer. So I, I'll scan the body, I'll scan the energy points, and I'll feel where I feel any uh, dissonance with the energy. And then I'll use my weighted arm and place it on those points. Um, but it's, you know, and I'll go by my intuition and what feels right. But then, it, but then when I do massage, for people who come to me for massage, I mean, I work with a lot of ladies and um, when they're on the on the massage therapy bed and I'm using my tuning forks, my weighted arm particularly, but then when I go in into the body and with the healing, then it's just a different world altogether. I just completely get lost and I'm, it's just, yeah, I just love it really. But I'm lucky that I can do, I can combine all these things really because it's having yeah. a toolkit it is having a toolkit. That's what I see, my imaginary toolkit. And so when I do consultations with clients, I'll pick up quite quickly what feels right, what doesn't, and I'll use my um, psychic and different skills to just to know what feels right and what isn't. Because some people don't want massage. They don't want to be touched. And some people, yeah. you know, so I'll use the tuning forks and with the tuning forks it's a really quick way of of enabling people to um completely switch off and go into their still point especially if they struggle with meditation 
because all they have to do is lay there fully clothed on the bed and let me play my tuning forks and work on and around the body and they go to sleep and when they wake up that it's they you know it, it works on every single level mentally physically emotionally and spiritually so um Very interesting. yeah they, they do so so yeah so that didn't finish my journey i still wasn't completed you know content just to stop and so i ended up going to do an awareness course so i did return to the spiritualist church and i went back to painton in 2018 and i did the awareness course with joan and alan and they held my hand and they took me through this journey and then i went into development for platform and then i went off to arthur finley college last year and did a course with Arthur Finley, and that was just, I did a wonderful course up there with Paul, um, my husband, and we we founded Sunflower Moon in 2016, and that's when um, Paul came on board, really, with his meditation, and, and he's a Reiki teacher, Reiki master teacher. So we've got quite a few uh -huh. skills and tools in our box between us, yeah. How wonderful to be working as a, a couple within that same energy. Oh, and it is actually. But he works in the NHS, so he's he's um, got two jobs. He wears two hats. Yeah, he wears two hats. So he's been really busy at home at the moment yeah. doing work for the NHS, and he's worked in the NHS for over thirty years. So yeah, so he does healing in his job really, as well as um, with Sunflower Moon. Mm. So it's well, this is it. We... He's here at my side. He's always with me. So he's <laughs> my uh, he's my biggest supporter. He is. Yeah. Well done, Paul. We'll, we'll be hearing from Paul as well later on during uh, this evening. Yeah. So that's wonderful. If yeah. you wouldn't mind, very quickly, some Emma Green has just popped a question in here. Um, oh, bless actually... her. Know, Emma. All right, and do you know what? For this time, especially, I think it's a very it's a, it's a wonderful question to ask. Um, um, Emma's asking, can you see that? Yes. How do you not take on all the sorrow you hear about, but stay so positive? Well, that's a really good question, Emma. And I'm really glad you've asked me that, especially during this period of time that we're going through. Yeah. But really, um, it's for me, it's self discipline. And I've been, um, I know it's hard when times are hard to, but I've been on this hypnotherapy course with um, the Devon Clinic and I've been working with many other staff there as volunteers um, giving um, talking therapy. And that excited me because I thought, wow, I can talk as much as I like, but, <laughs> but no, I do listen. But, um, but yeah, so um, getting back to um, how I deal with it, it's a, it is about a, mo a positive mindset and the way our mind and our brain are subconscious it's all about the subconscious mind and how it's designed it's designed to stay in that neg it's easier to go into the negative so we have to make a real effort to be more positive and and it is it's like i have a mantra really that i'm in the army now i'm in the army now and it's like if you were if on the parade ground and you were marching up and down and you thought, oh, oh, I've had enough of this. Well, that sergeant mate, he wouldn't have it, would he? He'd say, come on now, we've got, you know, we're not having it. Well, that's how I am. I just um, get up in the morning. And um, well, I'm lucky because my Paul, he, he's, he makes me laugh. He's always made me laugh. And that's something that it's a gift that he has really. But we open the curtains in the morning and it's like a brand new day on the world stage make the day whatever you want it to be and so if we get up in the morning and we have this attitude of oh really i don't feel too good today then that's the sort of day you're going to have and as hard as it is but the subconscious and the mind relates to whatever you tell it so it's like it's listening all the time so whatever you say your mind is listening to that so if you if you go around saying um you know, I, I, it's not a good day today. Well, it won't be a good day. So, but that's where the self-discipline comes in. And it's not easy. It really isn't easy because I know when I felt in a low point, it is like climbing up a mountain with concrete boots on when you get to that point. 
But, you know, Paul's an artist. He's a spiritual artist and he's painted the most amazing pictures. And while I'm sat here, and Emma's been in my therapy room, actually. And so the art that surrounds me and everything that's surrounding this room, and one of them is a painting that Paul did when I qualified um, and when I was studying on my tuning fork course. And it's a painting of two little girls that are in the garden. And when I look at that, I see my two little granddaughters who are playing and having fun. And there's a, there's a couple of sunflowers at the side. And, but at the side of it is a waterfall that leads down into a well. And so when people come in and I look at that myself, I look at that picture every day and I go, no, Fiona, you're going to stay in that garden. Stay in that garden like the little girls are, having fun and enjoying yourself, not going down that well. Because we all know if we go down that well, if we go too far down that well, we won't come back up again. So I, I have that little thing in my mind. And that, because, because I'm a clairvoyant and I, can, I see pictures and I work with pictures a lot, then I can create those pictures in my mind, whatever I want. So I use and Paul's, obviously he's had these pictures that have been sent to him. You come in little sketches and then the next thing it's a painting. And he's done me a set of cards and I use the cards for readings as well. So it's um, it's all, everything's connected. Everything we do is connected. Nothing's ever a waste of time, nothing. So yeah, it's self-discipline, but it's, you know, I was listening to Colin Fry um, this week um, and he, um, he has these nine steps to positivity. If anyone gets the opportunity to listen to that and it's, it's, it's well worth it. Yeah. So I, I agree. <laughs> um, no more questions at the moment. There's lots yeah. of uh, affirmations of what you were saying about the positivity. Yeah. And definitely, yes, I'm I always very adamant, you know, you've got to be positive. To me, I've always said like being negative is a very lazy energy. It takes no effort. It's, no, it's, it's just easy to do, you know. I don't like that. I don't like, yeah, I don't like, you know, and it's a negative and it's a lazy energy and we don't have to put any effort into it. No. You know, when I was saying the other day, uh, my current little mantra is don't look at every day as another day being locked in. Look at it as another day closer to being released. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, it's just changing that vibe because we are a vibration. We are, yeah, and yeah. You especially with your healing and with your tuning forks. Yeah. yeah found that very interesting as well um yeah. your comment about the tuning because just before we had the lockdown we had a medium uh, mm -hmm. and she actually came to me when i was chairing uh, and she said about my healing is going to take up a step and you're mm -hmm. going to be working with tuning forks so mm -hmm. you know being a bloke what do i do i go and buy a set of tuning forks <laughs> and then say what do i do with that then <laughs> uh, well I, Debbie, I, I you know, on the yeah I'd recommend Debbie. She was very good, actually, very, very good. Okay, yeah. I shall watch out for that one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was good. But um, yeah, do you want to see any of my tuning forks then? Or I'm sure we would love to, my darling. Yeah, well, I have got um, the on, which is universal energy. So I, I don't know whether you can pick that up, the sound. Sadly, not very well. Not very well. That's okay. I know it's the way this system works, but this is um, this is universal energy. This is all about healing, and I, I use this around the body um, when I'm and I put it at the ears and around the body at the different energy points. But the one that I really look this is an arm as well, but this is a weighted arm. So I use this as this is a powerful tool. I've, I use this a lot. So I'll use this on the energy points on the body. But I've also used it on clients who've had um, certain medical conditions and I've, I've used it to, it's, you know, I've used it in all different ways, really. It's, it is very, and for headaches, it's very good for headaches, this one. So I'd recommend anybody for pain relief. But the tuning forks work physically with physical pain. Um, they work emotionally, mentally and spiritually, but it's the it's the ancient um, solfeggio ones that I trained with actually, that I've had 
I've done a lot of case studies with, and this is the 174. So this is for ah. physical this is for physical pain. Have you got that one? No, no, no. Just as you ask that, somebody asked a question saying uh what frequency is that one? And just as they posted it, yeah. you said it's the 174. Yeah. So yeah, this is one from the ancient <laughs> The ancient solfeggio are the ancient healing tones, the codes that came from the time of Egypt. And so there's, um, they're, they're all like the notes, you know, like it's a sound really. It's all a frequency, but this is a 174 and this is for releasing pain. So that could be physical pain, emotional pain, and a mental, you know, mental pain, how you feel, how yeah. you think. Um, and then the next one that comes on that scale is the, the 285, which is for wounding. So if people feel that they've had, you know, they've had wounding done to them or, and it's effect, because it's all energy, isn't it? It's a vibration. We're, we're all energy. So we're, we're a sensitive, we feel energy. And so what comes to mind is if you have, to, if, for those of us who've had to go, been able to go to the supermarket, which <coughs> some people haven't. But those who've had been able to go out as sensitives, you will have noticed how you feel in that moment. And so the, the mind and the body, the body tells you everything if people take note of it. But usually most people are so busy they don't notice. But if you sit still in the energy, I mean, I sit with Spirit with Paul every evening. So you, I get out after all this seven years of working in the energy, I've learned to understand my energy, what my, because we all have our own personal frequency when we're in harmony or when we're not. And it's recognizing the difference of when you feel good or when you don't feel good. But then your environment, when you go and mix it with other people, then you will feel your energy change but that's when you've got to learn to what to recognize your own energy because you can't recognize other people's if you don't obviously know your own yeah yeah so, i might actually tie in with something i was uh, talking about today with somebody and I was, you know, they said i don't know what it is but at the moment i get very tearful very quickly you know and i said yeah i've noticed that it's almost it's almost like all our um, emotions have been so suppressed over yeah. the years by being something for somebody else by mm. being a worker by running to you know and being something and not actually just being ourselves well at this yeah. time mm. maybe we are being ourselves so actually our emotions are coming very much to the fore we are you know the nhs clap every time mm. tears you know yeah. you're out there clapping your hands and you're crying your heart out and it's because it's that wealth yeah. of emotion so maybe yeah. you know we are getting that little bit more intuitive because mm -hmm. it is about us at this time you know we're not happy a lot of people are not having to be a certain thing of you know work in a bank or work in a shop or work in a factory you know and all that that entails i get up at that time because i need to go to work people haven't got that and no. so you know we are actually becoming a bit more aware of ourselves yeah and with that our emotions we're becoming aware of our emotions not we are more emotional it's just we are more aware of the emotions that we already carry yes well the thing is it's a feeling isn't it and when we work with all the senses as a, a you know we are sentient beings so we feel you know we feel everything don't we you know we see we you know for those who see we hear those who hear we taste we touch you know the sense of touch we feel and there's all these sensors that we're using all the time. But, um, yeah, what's that? I've got a question up. Okay. Yeah, Sylvia Lopez is one of our trainee healers at the moment and a midwife. Hello, Hello, Hello you, Sylvia. Sylvia. So, do you always tell your clients that oh, we'll do some healing if you feel it? Uh, I think maybe Sylvia is saying there. Um, would you if you were drawn to somebody in conversation or say talking to me you know and would you be drawn and say well actually i do feel there's a bit of a need for healing around you at the moment or something so no i'd never do that that's not how i work right I, uh, sylvia if you're listening if i've not interpreted that correctly can you 
Put it properly, please, darling. <laughs> I don't um, I don't go out looking for clients and customers. Um, I'm a very great believer that the right people are sent to me and, you know, we meet one another for the reason that we meet them. So, you know, we're not everybody. We're, we're not. It's just. It just feels right, and, we, and you just go by your intuition and what feels right to you. But I never go out asking people to come and be clients. No, that wouldn't be ethically right. And I'd yeah. certainly not ask. I'd certainly not say to somebody, oh, "I think you need healing," because somebody said that to me once, and I found that very offensive. Yeah. Because at that moment in time, I didn't realise that I wasn't well. And so for somebody to say that to me, I, I thought, and so I, have a, I really am a believer that you treat other people how you would like to be treated yourself. And Very so true. That, that, that's my, I mean, there. that's the ethics that I work with. Yeah, so. and they are absolutely sound, my love, and I'm 110% yeah. behind you. I've yeah. seen cases with that. I've seen some people use that. And whether it's... If, by design or just a, a flaw in the character, but they say, oh, you don't look very well, you know? And do you know what? That puts an energy on somebody. It does, it does. You know, you could be sat there happy as Larry, you know, thinking, this is great. And then somebody comes up, well, you yeah. don't look well. And it's, yeah. it's a bit like the old evil eye on you. It's just like, yeah, oh, you're not terrible. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, it is. It's, um, you know, it, people do take note of what you say and how yeah. you make them feel. You know, and words are thoughts, and thoughts is, are energy. Yeah. So, you know, it's to be mindful, you know. And, and I know in the, in my journey there have been times when I really haven't been well, and that's why I've been on the journey that I've been on. And I'm really passionate about mental health and looking at, you know, doing the work that I do. I've done quite a bit of um, – I've got into doing readings, etc. with Marie Hines, who – She's just been there as a supporter for me on my healing journey and I've, as I've developed as a medium and a psychic because Marie has been a medium for over 30 years and what Marie knows a lot more about that journey than I do. But, um, but when I've done my, gone to do platform work, she's one of my supporters that sits there and gives me the thumbs up and, and encourages me to have that self-belief and self-confidence. And, so, and aren't, yeah. we so, aren't we so grateful for those supporters that we oh, have yes. in our life? <laughs> we are. So there's the positivity, you see, you know, and, it, and if I maybe I could have done it better, it's telling that person how you could have done it better in a constructive, positive way rather than stripping them of their confidence and then they might not ever get up again. And what yeah. a shame it would be, you know. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Question here from Philippa Hooper. How many forks do you have? Oh. <coughs> well, I've got, my, uh, <laughs> I've got my nine solfeggio, which are the ancient healing, and I didn't finish going through all what they do. but And then I've got my... My arm, my weighted arm, and my five to eight, so that's 12. And then I've got my ancestral fork. I love this one. This is quite a new one I've had in the last year. And so I know for on the healing journey, I know that we work with our ancestors. So and in, in the ancestors, I mean our parents and our grandparents going back, because who we are has been created by the people that we've spent time with and the way they've, they've lived their lives and the things that they've done. And that and some, you know, I know from my own healing journey of my own ancestors, um, I've learned a lot by looking back at my parents and my grandparents and how they did it and how they could have done it and how they did it good and how they maybe could have done it a little better. And, I, and we learn from that, don't we? Very and much so. We, we are the evolution of our ancestors as well and we should never yeah, forget yeah. you know we are here today because yeah. of them so due deference must always yeah. be paid an acknowledgement to them exactly. yeah lovely susan townsend hi mary which which make of tuning fork and um, where did you buy it and is a is it a weighted one mm. people are terrible at typing and i i'm just as terrible <laughs> 
So I think Susan's asking, uh, what bra what brand are your uh, tuning forks, and where did you buy the weighted one? Um, I got my tuning forks um, from Debbie when I did my training with Suara Sound, and that's that's where I got mine. But sometimes oh, I'll send away. Yeah, sometimes I'll send away for some extra ones, but the actual ones I've got here now are the ones I got when I trained. But um, but you can't, you know, you need to get them from a good source um, because there's different types of tuning forks out there. But it really, it for me, when I got them, they they were personal to me. And so, and it's the energy, everything's energy. There's energy in the tuning <laughs> forks, obviously, and there's my energy that's in there. So they're my little... Like, so if you send away for them, it's it's maybe not quite the same as when you get to look at them in a shop. But then if you do your research, you'll find the one that's right for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then at the holistic shows, people sell them at holistic shows as well. True. True, yeah. true, true. Yeah. So. Uh, you're putting my uh, 16 pound Amazon buy of a set of eight tuning forks rather into the shade here. Now, I think I might go and throw them away. <laughs> say that. No, it's, it's not the tool. It's what you do with it. That's what I say. <laughs> it's what you do with the tool. You know, it's like I said to somebody about my toolkit and it's it's learning to use the tools for the right way for you because you could have a set of tools, couldn't you? You know, I could have a set of plumber's tools and if I had a leaking tap, goodness knows what would happen with that tap because I wouldn't have a clue what to do with the tool. So, you know, it's what you do with it, isn't it? And again, we're back to intention, aren't we? Very much, um, yeah, very what much. We do with it, you know, we work from the heart and we work from the right place and we work with skill and we educate ourselves. And so, I'm so sorry, I just had an image there when you said I might have a set of plumbers tool. I imagine you doing healing, somebody laid out on the table and you're running in with a couple of plungers. <laughs> <I thought, "Ooh." laughs> no, but uh, yeah, but it is, it's that toolkit. I have that imaginary toolkit when I'm around and about, so I'm still putting things in there. I'm still yeah. putting things in my, in my <laughs> toolkit, yeah. yeah. Mediumistically, you need a yeah. toolkit. You need to be looking at, like, photos in magazines and <laughs> just acquiring just images and knowledge because that's what spirit work with, you know. Um, yeah, they do. You know, yeah. I... I've got a thing at the moment for the Isle of Man and I was working just before the lockdown and I was with somebody and I said, I've got this guy and I said, I don't know where he's living, but it's lovely. I'm so drawn. I said, not the Isle of Man, is it? And she went, yeah. And I went, oh, <laughs> because I've been reading up on the Isle of Man yeah. for some bizarre yeah. reason. It was there yeah. for you. Yeah. We have a question here from, you're going to be impressed by this, Robert, because I've been practicing your name. Robert Bernhardt. Oh. oh, he's coming on live on the 8th, isn't he? He I is saw indeed. Today. Hello, Robert. <laughs> I saw that you're on. I can't wait to watch your um, talk on the evening. It's, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, yeah. It will be a fascinating talk. Yeah, it, will. it will be. It will. He is a doctor and a surgeon and a spiritual yeah. healer. Yeah. So how amazing is that? But yeah. I agree, I agree with you, Robert, about music. <laughs> I like the high vibration music myself. I'm a great fan of Catherine Jenkins. And I know with my tuning forks, they're uh, attuned with the sounds to, um, I mean, I'm not, um, you know, like the, the re, mi, fa, so, la, um, those sounds, they're attuned to that sound. But I, I'm, not, I, I'm not a singer. Um, and we'll Paul will vouch for that. <laughs> but I love to go through the scales when I listen to high vibrational frequency songs like Catherine Jenkins. And it makes me feel amazing. It really does make me feel amazing just to go through those. The, the, the vibration is in the voice and the sound. It's just a lovely feeling. And so, yes, music. And everyone has their own personal choice. I mean, I know my eldest son, he likes rock music. I have a cousin in Amsterdam who uh, lives over in the Netherlands. He um, he's a singer, um, so there's um, and he's like me, chatters a lot, <laughs> but he's got a great voice for singing. I haven't got a singing voice; mine's for chattering. But um, <laughs> but I love to listen to music. I do. I really do. And everyone has their own personal choice. So I'd like to know what Roberts is. 
we will find out. Yeah, we'll find uh, I, out. Use, I yeah. use music a lot preparing when I'm going to be working on platform. I have my uh, sit and tune in before I go out and work, and I go for a variety of music, and some of it's I've got a very eclectic taste. Yeah. But I know when it's the right one because tears start flowing. And yeah, yeah. when that happens, I go, great, thank you. I know you're close. But when that emotion comes in like that, you go, right, hold on to that. Quick, let's go and work. <laughs> well, I've got my Paul here that's um, wanted to answer that question, oh, actually. I was just, yeah, I was just, just, yeah, just yeah, put him in. There he is. There he is. <laughs> um, that way. Yeah, I was, that way. I was just going to say yeah, that. It's the opposite some, way you want to go. Yeah. There you go. I can't see him. <laughs> I say yeah. Devon Corning. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to say, there are some music and some songs written in certain frequencies. For example, the 5 to 8 frequency, which is the universal sound of love and healing. And the certain Beatles songs, for example, written in that 5 to 8 mm -hmm. frequency. So I'm thinking yeah. of the songs by John Lennon, like Imagine. Yeah. It's written mm. in that five to eight frequency. So there's mm. there's numerous others as well, which I, I don't ask me to say what they are because I can't think. But a lot of the Beatles songs are written in that precise frequency. So I just think it's interesting mm. how that is a sound yeah. and music mm. is resonating on a healing frequency. Yeah, no, that is very interesting because music can mm. inspire you, uplift you, make you roar. Mm. Or it can reduce you to tears, can't it? And it's yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a sound. it's a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah, yeah it's working on the feeling. Mm. And um, Edgar Casey, you know, the the psychic from the thirties, he said that sound healing was the medicine of the future. That's what he said. So. I'm, I'm a big believer. There's an awful lot out there to explore. Um, and maybe at times like this, these avenues will be looked into a little bit more mm -hmm. because there, there is so much mm -hmm. um, natural working in harmony with, mm -hmm. oh, excuse the pun, <laughs> mm -hmm. working in harmony with nature and the planet yeah. rather than gouging yeah. it out and burning it, you know? Yeah. There is so, so much more out there to be discovered. Mm -hmm. Jamie Williamson has a question. Lovely Jamie, you gave us a lovely service last Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Do you think the time it takes to carry out healing is important? Oh, Jamie, thank you for your question. That's lovely. Um, well, my um, the way I am with healing, um, I know if I've only got a certain time frame, then I'll use that but I'll use all the time that I'm given <laughs> so when people come to see me for a maybe um, an hour and a half appointment and for many people who come here they don't usually get out the door for about two and a half hours <laughs> because we chatter <laughs> we chatter with the start and then uh, then we have the, the, the treatment whatever and then we have more chatter at the end and um, because I don't worry about time I, uh, I just enjoy the energy and meet and being with the people, really. So I don't have back-to-back -back appointments. Actually, I only ever take one client a day. Um, Excellent. Yeah. You can't rush a good thing. <laughs> no, no you're, you're quite right. Um, yeah. Working in the field of mediumship, you know, we, we've got different disciplines. We always yeah. say, you know, if you're a platform medium doing the churches or a den, you need to try and keep the contacts fairly short because you know if you get like a 15 minute message that one person is elated and 99 other people are going oh my god so you shut up yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you do I have know. to speed it up but you only gloss over the time when you like that. you don't well, really get to the yeah and also with, with healing I mean the the, the the client, the patient would get the healing they need at mm. the time. Mm. So you know, they could get that within 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It mm. could take longer, but it mm. will flow and go to where it needs to do uh, as quick as it needs to do. Mm. And it will keep on working for many days, and mm. hours and days afterwards mm. as well. Mm. I know. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. I know. Question from... I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to start saying over. <laughs> we have this time lag, and I hear silence, so I'm going to fill it. That's okay. That's okay. After you, madam. 
<laughs> no, that's all right. You go. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> quite often we get people coming into the church, you know, and inquiring, which is beautiful. That's absolutely yeah. lovely when yeah. people are coming in with an inquiring mind. And the, mm -hmm. one of the questions most often asked is, does healing work? Uh, my response is always, well, if you say it's not going to work, guess what? But if you just sit and try and be open to it, you may not get the result that you want, but you will be given what you need. Yes. You know? yeah. so it's that understanding there, you know, um, is, is not, it's one of these things is never going to be sorted out in a, a debate or an argument. It's just sort of like, you know, we know what we do. We give it out how you take it again what i was saying earlier about we know what we're doing in that energy and giving it out how you take it is how mm. it's going to work you mm. know so it sorry reminds, it, it reminds me of my bereavement work really and there's you know the stages of grief and there's no time limit there's no order to it <clears throat> so it's the same with healing really it will happen when it's when it happens for that person because each one of us are is unique and how we look at life and how we deal with life is unique to each and every one of us. So, you know, you can't speak for everyone because each one of us is, is like I say, a unique, beautiful person in their own Indeed. right. Yeah. Indeed. And each one of us has our own unique team working with us in spirit. Yes. I always say to everybody, you know, we're all mediums yeah. of one form or another, be yeah. it working on a platform, be it through a healing, <laughs> be it through inspiration, be it through art, be it through music, be it through literature. Yeah. Inspiration, you know, is spirit drawing close and going, try that, mm. have a look at that. Have you thought about that, you know? So, yeah, very, very important. Well, I enjoyed the, right. lady that you, the ladies that you had on last week with just, with the writing, that inspired me because I do like to write, so... But as you say, it inspires you in any way, doesn't it? Art, like Indeed. Stage, writing. Yeah. Indeed. And it, it's um, a common, not a misconception, but it's something sometimes, I always say with spiritualism especially, you need to occasionally to go back to 1.0 with everybody because we all get to a level where we understand things. <laughs> but then yes. when we're talking to people just in, you know, mm -hmm. um, we had a, a lecture here once from one of the old school mediums lovely lady and it's not her fault it's just it just happened mm -hmm. and there were two young girls in who had never set foot in a spiritualist church and she'd given this talk and she'd said something about circle work and there were any questions and the girl went yeah what's a circle well, unfortunately the lady didn't handle it as well as she could have done but that always stuck in my mind, you know? Yeah, we've got to go back to the basics all the time, treat everybody up back on that basic level because yes. our knowledge grows and grows and we can say yeah. things to people when they're looking at us going, the, the, what now, where, who? <laughs> yeah, well, for me, my journey with spirit and my spirit team, it's like you, you go through school, <clears throat> don't you? Then you go to college and then you go to university. And so... Um, I've, you know, I, you progress through the ranks and, and each and every one of us know exactly where we are. And there's no point, you can't skip a place. No. You can't go from school to no. university. You have no to go to no. college. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me for butting in. It's 1958. Now, uh, yeah. when we were talking earlier, I believe that you said the lovely Paul will be doing a healing meditation at eight. Yeah, yeah that's so, right. Because eight. Every night at eight o'clock, and this is night 50 for us, we've been sitting, lighting a candle and sending out love and healing to all that need it. And we've got a book with names in and we've connected with people all over, really, um, abroad as well as at home. Mm. And lovely healers who are doing all the what we're all doing, really. And people who don't call themselves healers when they are healers. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. On that yes they are so um so all you have to have is that intention for love and just send it out from your heart to somebody else's heart and it will be felt yeah it will exactly yeah. right so yeah. i'll turn it over to you now for that healing meditation you very kindly invited us to join with you tonight yeah thank you
Okay, that's lovely. Yeah. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. good. I'm sure yeah. we'll see. We'll have the eyes closed. He won't be looking at me anyway <laughs> in a short while. Um, okay, as Phil said, we, we sit and send out healing every night at eight o'clock. We light a candle. We just join up and connect and join that lovely, beautiful healing energy and send it out to all those that need it. So all I'd like to, to do, and tonight we're going to call in healing for ourselves and then we're going to send that lovely healing out to anyone who needs it. So I'd just like you to make yourself just nice and comfortable. Just start to relax in your chair and just gently close your eyes. And all you have to do is listen to my voice. Just follow my voice and let my voice guide you. And just start to bring your awareness to your breath. Just start to notice it as it comes into your body and it goes out again. And just start to let the world around you fade away. And if you hear any noises or distractions or any thoughts pop into your mind, just acknowledge them and let them go. Just let them drift away. And just bring your attention back to your breath. And then gradually... As you settle, start to take some deeper and slower breaths. Nice and gentle. No need to force it. Just deep and slow. With every breath, you start to feel more calm, more relaxed and at peace. So imagine you're breathing in love, in peace, and you're breathing out love, in peace to the world. You're breathing in love, and peace, and you're breathing out love, and peace. I would like you to imagine you're breathing in the beautiful golden light, beautiful golden healing energy. With every breath you draw in that golden light, that healing energy. Of every breath in, you draw in that beautiful healing energy more and more into your body. Just imagine that beautiful golden light filling your head and your mind. Of every breath you draw in it through into your body, into your neck, your throat, and your shoulders. If you hear any energy, any tension there, just release it and let your shoulders drop. With every breath you draw in that beautiful golden light, that healing energy through your body. Imagine it now moving into your chest and the abdomen. And just picture it now around your heart. Just imagine that heart now glowing brighter and stronger with that beautiful healing energy and that love, that unconditional love. Just imagine your heart pumping that beautiful golden light all the way around your body, every part of you. Just feel it washing through you like a beautiful wave of relaxation, bathing you, soothing you, comforting you, healing you. Until every part of your body is filled with this beautiful golden light, this healing energy. Through your arms, down to your hands and fingers, right the way down through your hips, your legs, to your toes. Now your whole body and your mind is filled with this beautiful golden light, this beautiful healing energy. And as it is, just imagine your whole body, your whole mind, every part of you returning to good health and well-being, bathed in this beautiful healing energy. Just imagine your whole body and mind returning to good health and well-being. And if there is any part of you today 
that you feel needs extra healing, any part of you which needs extra healing today, just imagine that part of you with the light, that golden light growing strong and brighter in that part of you. And imagine that part of you, picture that part of you returning to good health and well. Feel that beautiful healing energy in the whole body, bathed in the mind, the body, and the soul. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to take three further deep breaths. From the third breath out, I'd like you to imagine sending out that beautiful golden light, that golden healing energy, far and wide to all those that need it. In whatever form you can imagine, just picture that the third breath out. We're going to send out that beautiful golden light, healing energy, spreading it across the land like a beautiful golden blanket of comfort and love and support to all of those that need it at this time. So take three deep breaths. Goodbye. Two and three. Release all that beautiful golden light, that golden healing energy to all those that need it at this time. Send it far and wide. To where it's needed. And now I'd just like you to start to return your attention to your breath. And just start to let your breath settle and start to breathe normally again. Holding on to that feeling of peace and love, that feeling of calm and relaxation. Just start to bring your awareness back to your breath and slowly, gently bring your awareness back to your physical body. Start to feel the chair beneath you and the floor beneath your feet and bring your awareness back. But holding on to that feeling of love and peace. Gradually, gently, when you're ready to start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and stretch your arms and your legs. When you're ready, just gently open your eyes. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was lovely. <clears throat> I'm, I'm giving two meditations a week online. Actually, it's quite nice for me to sit in a meditation, so thank you very much. <laughs> no, that's my pleasure. Thank you. What a lovely evening, and what a lovely couple. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> well, I'm down, I think okay. I'm down there. There you I go, think, yeah. I think I right. am. I couldn't see him. I couldn't see him on the yeah, screen. Please, on, on the little box, but we're in the bigger yeah. box. Let yeah. me try something. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this works properly. Oh, there you are. That's better. Oh, oh, there we go. I see him now. I couldn't see him. Oh, I, was like, right. we were, I think we were there, but we just. Yeah. Um, He's in glorious Technicolor now. <laughs> oh, you can see every part of us. I know. I love seeing in your chair. Looking forward to visiting your chair. Yes, what we didn't say was that Paul, Paul is my, um, I was born and grew up in Paul, so Paul is my hometown. I remember going to your church with my mum and dad when I was oh, a wee right. lad, mm. with my mum and dad and my grandmother. Mm. So I do have fond, very fond memories yeah. of, uh, of, of attending your lovely mm. church. So it's lovely to see it from the inside again. Yeah. This um, setting now is much better. I was up where we used to have the healing at one end, um, mm. we've now turned into the church library and I was sat because of the computer of that time, 
I had mm. to sit with that in the background. Uh, it just seems to be a common thing now. Everybody on TV has got books behind them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now with the new computer, I can actually get all the oh, church in, which is lovely. Uh, just, you know, just yeah. Yeah. brings it all back together again. We hope to come and visit you at some time once yeah. we're allowed out again. Yeah, later this year, we'll be yeah. down, to, we'll be see down to see you. Yeah. You um, are lot, more than welcome. Yeah, you are lot, more than welcome. Yeah, lots of happy memories <laughs> of our time spent in pool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's very um, emotive at the moment on the Thursday night because we've got a number of um, super yachts in uh, berth because of course you know the charter market is gone. Um, we've got something like three hundred million pounds worth of yachts in two yachts, uh, and they are beasts. But mm -hmm. I'll give them full credit. When we do the Thursday night applaud, they're there with the horns going. And do you know what? Yeah. That is such an emotional sound as yeah. well in the yeah. background. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got that here because hmm. we're not far from Brixham, <laughs> so there's a lot of boats. And the fishermen, you know, uh, the fishermen are down yeah. there. The, the men that go out and um, bring in the fish and risk their lives really mm. when they go out yeah. to see fish. Yeah, every time. They have the horns going. Yeah. And we can hear yeah. it actually. We can hear it from yeah. where we live when they've been sounding the and horns it, on the And again, it's funny, isn't it? It's this sound vibration. It does. It's so it emotional. Is. It's a very emotive sound. Yeah, it is. I love Brixham. I've only been there once, sadly, but I absolutely loved it because the I'd heard. One of the uh, ladies from the church, good old Barbara, who's been here since the year dot, absolutely yeah. love her to bits. Yeah. Um, her grandparents used to be custodians of St. James's Church. And she used to tell us tales about they used to play hymns on the church bells. Well, I'd never heard that. But the day we were in Brixham, we were sat there having a coffee and the church bells were going. And I was singing Amazing Grace. And I thought, yeah. why am I singing that? because they were playing it on the church bells i was like oh good day. you know i've yeah. heard about this i've never heard it and how amazing but you can imagine that can't you because mm. all those towns they all sort of like go down into a valley and right in the middle is the church so when the fishermen yeah. used to go out the last thing they'd see was the church spire That's and the right. first thing coming home would be the church spire you just think oh that you could just get that energy it's lovely the sound yeah. is a very powerful vibration and it resonates Indeed, it is. stuff again yeah. now it resonates on all the cells in the body and we're 70 percent water and the cells yeah. are 70 percent water so it's all about that res you know we have our own natural harmony of mm -hmm. so when when we're not in harmony that's when things start to go amiss mm -hmm. but you know we have lots of subtle <clears throat> signs before we go ill the body will tell us that we're, that it's not <coughs> but many of us don't listen <laughs> yeah, so, yeah very true that's what so, i was saying about the importance of sitting with self every day really yeah. and get to know yourself because you know yeah. so many of us think we know other people when we don't even know ourselves mm. so and it's being it's being honest with yourself you know that's what i've discovered being honest with yourself yeah, that's where all yeah. the lie. Mm. Yeah, and you always got to bring things back to self as well. You know, when we have um, discourse and things going on in life, you know, what what is that doing for me? What is that bringing in for me? And it's not being yeah. selfish. Yeah. No. It's being selfless. You know, you, you just think, right, bring it all back to self. Yeah. Lovely little comment here from Australia. There you go. Yes, You're international you. mediums now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Helen. Thank you. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Helen. You oh. can go out now and say I'm an international medium. <laughs> yeah. The age of technology, it's amazing, isn't it? The age of technology. Oh. Anything's possible now. It's like you said at the beginning about being out there and spreading the word, really, which is, yeah. you know, we're all yeah. mediums, aren't we? Each yeah. and every one of us has the ability to be a medium. And, yeah, and the sight so. ability, it's just learning how to fine tune it. But if you think, isn't it, it wonderful with that healing meditation? We've sent mm. healing all around the world yeah. with that. We've mm. connected yeah. on the opposite sides of the planet yeah. and joined up that healing and stretched mm. it all around the globe. Mm. It's just fantastic, isn't it? It mm. is wonderful. absolutely amazing.
But I never underestimate the power of thoughts and thought transference, you know, and if you think happy thoughts to people, they'll pick it up. How many times mm. do we have that? I was just about to ring you. Yeah. You know? So many that so many times that happens. I was just about to call you. Fancy you calling. I, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's mind to mind. Mind to mind yeah. and heart to heart. And heart to heart, yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I can't thank you two enough for a wonderful evening. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. It's been really uplifting. I hope you've enjoyed it. Yes, we, we have. have. Lovely. Thank we you. We have. For and Gloria's gone to sleep. She's got bored <laughs> listening. So it's because she couldn't get a word in herself. Uh, you know. <laughs> all Gloria. So here we are. <laughs> so there she is. Well, where have you put your hand? She's, uh, she's, uh, no wonder she's walking. Yeah. She was legless <laughs> under the table here. <laughs> Yeah, I think she needs a bit of healing. I think I'll get the tuning oh. forks on her after. After that, she will do. <laughs> Minute of all uh, up, our ratings shut up. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody who's, who's, yes. who's been there supporting yeah. us. Like, we know many people who said they tune in tonight, and we're so, so grateful for yep. the love yeah. and the time. that Because time is so precious. You know, it's the most precious thing we have is time. And so creating magical memories, and that's what I've done today. That's what we've all done Indeed. for our loved ones mm. and and anyone who, who listens in on this after. You know, I hope, that, I and mean, I know, I just, I don't hope, I know that they will receive the healing that's needed because it's just the seed that we plant, isn't it? We just plant a little seed and it's up, it's to them really to let it, to, to water it and, and let it grow and flower. I do yeah. believe each and every one of us is a beautiful flower, you know. Our flower is the sunflower. It stands tall and strong and shines its light big and bright. And lovely. that's us. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. We'll say night. <laughs> we'll say night's meat we'll say sun, sun yeah. family and blessings to yeah. you all. Yeah. And back to you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Take care. Thank you Thank so you. much. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. It's been an absolutely beautiful evening. Just remember, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., we have the lovely Mark Stone. We'll be taking our divine service. On Wednesday, uh, oh, no, Monday night, 7 p.m., we have a meditation. It's only a very short time, but it's just that little chill-out time like we've just done. Wednesday at three o'clock, we have Carla Hain taking our service and we have a special on Friday night with, do forgive me for the pronunciation, I asked a German friend of mine, how do I pronounce his name? And I haven't quite got it yet. Robert Bert. He is a, a doctor and a surgeon and a spiritual healer, will be joining us live from Germany. So I, I thought that warranted a special night because that would be very interesting. Saturday morning at 9 a.m. we have another meditation. And then at 7 p.m. on a Saturday night we have the lovely Craig Morris from yeah. Torquay giving us a chance. Yeah. So week to look forward to. Take yeah. care, everybody. God bless. Yeah. Stay safe. Stay sane. And needless <laughs> to say, stay indoors. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.